Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a brand new video. So I am hoping that this will be the video that goes up the day before Christmas Eve. So um, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Um, I promised you festivities in this video. I promised packing for Little Harbour. We had a um, um, like a party to go to, Christmas food shopping, and I'm sorry to say that I really, I really can't promise much at this point. So if you watched my last video, you'll know that I became a little bit unwell and um, I took a test for COVID, it was negative, all was fine, went to nursery with Avery. Um, I actually ended that vlog last night and um, I'd always planned to test again yesterday evening because that would have been five days from when I was in contact with my brother and his family who all tested positive for COVID and they say online to wait five days because it could take five days to show up in your system. So I took the COVID test and it was positive, undeniably blazing positive. Um, I've still got the test, I'll show it to you in a minute when I actually get up. Um, so naturally our next step was to test everyone else. Avery was also undeniably blazing positive. Josh had a very faint line, um, so positive, but just not sure what stage. Boys both negative, which is a silver lining. Avery's not doing great today. Um, this is the first time she stopped coughing all morning. She's very tired. I've currently got a SATS monitor on her just to um, keep an eye on her oxygen because her breathing just seems a little bit laboured. Um, I feel rough but I think the kicker of it all is I really don't feel as rough as I did a couple of days ago when I was testing negative and that is so annoying because we now can't go to Little Harbour next week um, which is our that was our entire build up to Christmas. We hadn't planned anything else. I mean, life kind of goes on with COVID nowadays. It's kind of treated as a cold. I phoned the school this morning and they said, yep, it's fine to send them in, whether they've got COVID or not, as long as they're well in themselves, they can come in. Life goes on as normal. And even when I called Little Harbour last night to let them know, she was hesitant to cancel on us. But I just said, I know what a mild virus can do to Avery and there's so many vulnerable ch children at Little Harbour I couldn't have that on my conscience especially right now before Christmas so we've decided not to go to Little Harbour even if we could we're not going to just in case um, we're not going to be having Marley this weekend which we're meant to be doing um, we were meant to be visiting my in-laws on Sunday we're not going to be doing that just because they are vulnerable as well um, but aside from that I think I am just going to go on as normal um everyone else does and that is what you are told to do these days um i wish i could say the same for avery but she's just not doing great today um she needs to have a little nap to be honest which she is trying to but i think she's just a bit uncomfortable um her temperature has been okay this morning i do keep checking it um she's coughed up a lot of stuff i've given her a nebulizer just trying to keep on top of it really and keep a very close eye on her um i've got a stew in the slow cooker so at least that's dinner sorted for tonight just in case i'm not able to move my backside off this sofa today like i said i don't feel as bad i mean i feel rough don't get me wrong um but i don't feel i don't feel the chills anymore i don't feel the achiness i don't feel feverish and i don't think i have a fever anymore either but more so to sort of just keep an eye on avery and make sure she's okay i'll probably be keeping the sats monitor on her every time i leave the room today just in case avery can spike a fever very very quickly and if she spikes a fever then she's at really high risk of having a seizure so i i'm probably about 75% sure at this point that we'll end up with a hospital stay before Christmas. Um, we shall see. I've got a st sneeze and who doesn't want to come out. So, yeah. I felt like crying last night. 
we were also looking forward to Little Harbour. Plans are kind of ruined a little bit. In terms of the other plans we had, I'm unsure if they're going to go ahead. Um, we're going to do our Christmas food shopping, still going to do that. And we were meant to go to my mum and dad's farewell party. I think whether or not we go to that kind of depends on how we all feel. Um, but like I said, we're kind of told in the UK to carry on as normal. There are particular kind of places that you you ask not to go, but really I think that's the, the kind of discretion of each individual place. So for example, the dentist. Um, Eli was supposed to have a dentist appointment today and they do say if you have COVID or COVID symptoms not to go in. Um, so I phoned them this morning and because it's me with COVID and not Eli, because Eli's tested negative, they're putting a mark against his name for late cancellation, which I think is ridiculous because the only reason he can't go in is because I can't take him because they don't want me to go. But because there's nobody else here, I mean, Josh has still gone to work. He tested positive, but he's still gone to work because he can, because there's no reason why he can't go anymore. Again, everything just goes back to normal covid is just a bad cold these days life goes on really it's just little harbour that we are missing out on which is sad because that is what we were all most looking forward to i had the suitcase down ready to pack i'd kind of planned in my head and do you know what this i think this is the most frustrating bit guys as you guys know december's really busy for me this year i've been like killing myself to try and get everything done and that is because I knew we were going to be away for those few days before Christmas. So I'd miss a lot of time to keep on top of everything. Now in me, you know, working so hard to get everything done, I've probably suppressed my immune system a little bit. And now I've got COVID. So the reason that I was working so hard, the reason I was killing myself to get everything done, it's not happening anymore. So, yeah, I'm a little bit down today, um, and I'm I'm sorry. I know that um, there are you know some people that that don't feel in the mindset to watch videos like this when they're not positive and upbeat. And you guys know I do try and keep positive and upbeat most of the time, but I think today I just I really can't. I'm I'm really in that mindset where it just feels like could we get any more bad luck? Fast asleep little baby sats are looking okay at the moment um almost seems a little bit back to front on camera um so this one here is her heart rate and this one is her oxygen so her oxygen is 99 heart rate's 144 so her heart rate's a little bit um on the higher end but she's working a little bit harder to breathe it's her oxygen really that's the main number i'm looking at um, she's kind of dozing on and off on the sofa at the minute. I've got a side lying, I'm just sitting next to her. Um, yeah, just letting her rest. So here's the situation at the minute. Um, I, she woke up, I laid her like this just to keep her on her side. Um, she was cold, shivering, so I put blankets over her. She's on the SATS monitor still. Um, took her temperature. 39.1 um, she's still shivering I've just given her some ibuprofen um, I've signalled Josh to come home because usually when this happens she has a seizure and what we've decided to do is as long as nothing happens between now I mean she's fallen to sleep so I'm on tender hooks because I'm just waiting for it to happen um, if it doesn't happen, if nothing happens between now and when Josh gets home, we're gonna just take her to P-Dops instead of waiting for it to happen at home, get an ambulance, um, do it that way. We're just gonna take her to P-Dops, get her under observation. I'm gonna call them now and give them a heads up. So I've just popped home for a minute to sort a few things out and get the boys fed and whatnot. So I thought I'd pop on and give you an update. Uh, we did take Avery into hospital and, um, when we got there, she was all right. Her temperature had dropped to about 37.7, which is still on the higher end of normal, but back in kind of normal range. Um, and she perked up a little bit. 
that was short lived. She then started to spike fever again, became quite lethargic, her oxygen started to drop so she needed to go back on oxygen and her temperature ended up going up to 40 degrees. Um, they have put a cannula in her foot, they're giving her IV fluids, um, they started her on antibiotics before actually running any more tests but after running some more tests and doing an x-ray um, it looks as though she actually has aspiration pneumonia again. It's the second time in two months. Um, so she's now going on um, a course of antibiotics and they are talking about increasing her prophylactic antibiotic from three days a week to five days a week or every day. I'm not 100% sure, Josh just called me to tell me this. I'm a bit concerned about the effect that's going to have on her stomach but I don't know, maybe it's something we're just going to have to see through the winter. Um, because she shouldn't be getting aspiration pneumonia this easily. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. She is going to be in overnight. I'm glad for it too. And I'm also glad she started to get treatment before having a seizure. Normally it would be the other way around. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we have avoided a seizure because of that. Um, but let's just get through the night. Um, I've just come home to pack a few bits, tidy up a little bit because we're left in such a hurry the house was an absolute mess and it was just giving me anxiety um so yeah i'm just about to pack a few bits now um and head back to the hospital to send josh home with the boys and he will do kind of the morning routine and i'll stay in the hospital with avery um being in hospital with having covid um it's kind of a lot like it was when the pandemic was kind of a thing. Um, we have to stay in our room, um, we have to wear masks when um, doctors and nurses come into the room and um, they've kind of cordoned off the bathroom that we're using for just us. If it wasn't for the whole pandemic it would feel very surreal but I think because we lived with it for about two years um, we're kind of used to it. Um, I, I'm flagging a little bit now, I'm feeling really, really tired, like more tired than I usually would. Um, but in terms of like COVID itself, I don't feel kind of as feverish anymore. So I think I'm over the worst of it now. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna pack a few bits up and um, head back to the hospital. We are home. We busted Avery out of the hospital. Um, if you are wondering, she is down here. She is kind of drifting in and out of sleep. Excuse the washing machine, by the way. She's drifting out in and out of sleep, and we've kind of just got her in this position on her side um, because it's easier for her to shift mucus, and she just seems comfortable laying on her side like this. Um, so the hospital would have kept us in another night, to be fair, maybe even more than that, because she's still not doing great. Zach is upstairs, if you can hear him. But we got to a point where we felt like Avery would get better care at home than she would in the hospital. We were so unimpressed with the staff. Not just the staff, but just, just everything in general this time round. So we're very glad we took her in when we did, because thank God and touch wood, Avery has not had a seizure yet and usually with an illness by now she would have had a seizure and she has spiked temperatures multiple times while she was in the hospital and I can only think that that is down to the fact that we took her in and she started treatment as soon as she started to spike those fevers instead of us waiting for her to fit to take her in so they started the antibiotics straight away they gave her the oxygen straight away so I took her in on the Wednesday afternoon and um it, to start with, they gave her, I mean, we got there and her oxygen dropped straight away. It started to drop. So they gave her oxygen and it was the dry oxygen. And I, I'm not sure if I've explained this already, but um, Avery doesn't do so well with the dry oxygen when she's ill like this because she coughs so much and the dryness of the oxygen makes her cough even more. And then she's not really getting much of a breath and then her oxygen's not going up as a result. So we said to that to them at the time, and we said last time they put her on vapor therm, which is like positive pressure oxygen, but it's also vaporized. And that seems to keep her airways nice and moist so that she can actually benefit from the oxygen. And we said this to them and they kind of shrugged it off and said, well, just keep her on dry oxygen for now. If she needs it overnight, we'll do it then. 
of course she ended up needing it so they did end up giving it to her and the nurses kind of agreed with us then that they should have just listened to us when we said at the end of the day we know our child we've done this many times we know what works for her and we kind of wish they would just do it straight away so Avery doesn't have to suffer for longer so she was on the oxygen they put in a cannula started IV antibiotics straight away just to cover her for any um, infection in case there was one um, they were treating her as, po as co um, COVID positive um, but they still sent off their own test just to confirm it we never actually got those results but we were pretty confident that she was positive because we all tested positive the rest of the time really was kind of just monitoring her giving her antibiotics um, giving her oxygen she has developed quite a nasty cough which she's still really really suffering with and she is still on the warmer side. She's not breaking fevers, but we are keeping on top of her paracetamol and her ibuprofen. It actually got to a point where she needed um, IV paracetamol because she was throwing up her paracetamol and ibuprofen. But she's had a chest x-ray and it has confirmed that she does once again have aspiration pneumonia. And we really had to kind of plead with the doctors on what we can do because for some reason ever since March something just changed in Avery where the slightest little thing makes her very very poorly and it's because she's getting aspiration pneumonia and we don't know if her swallow's gotten weaker or if her reflux, reflux has gotten worse and you know we asked what are our options to try and prevent this and really our main options are the patch to lower her secretions to kind of dry up her secretions in case it is because of the secretions themselves or the other two are fun duplication and the j tube if it is coming from her stomach and that is what she's struggling with now the fun duplication and the j tube aren't things that are going to happen you know straight away avery's already been referred to the children's surgical team and that's something we speak to them too about oh them to not them to about speak to them about when we get those appointments but referrals take time much longer than they should but sadly that is the case with everyone at the moment Avery's not singled out there the system is just a little bit slow the patch is something we can do straight away so the doctor is going to prescribe that however because he is just the ward doctor um the acute doctor on the day today he has advised me not to start using it, wait until we actually speak to Avery's um, consultants and doctors that know her situation a bit more to get the go ahead to start using those, but at least we will have them ready to go. So we're definitely gonna give that a go before we you know, resolve to surgery, but as you guys know, surgery is a strong contender at this point because we are just at our wits end. We're so sick to death of seeing Avery so poorly, so, frequently it breaks our heart every single time she's being poked and prodded with needles every single time it's it, it's a lot and it just feels constant at this point in saying that you know we kind of knew we'd end up in hospital with Avery having COVID this time around given the kind of past experience over the last year with a minor common cold what we got so frustrated with the hospital about this time around is mistakes they were making so one being that Avery is on topiramate and she's on 30 milligrams of topiramate. Now the bottle that we have is 20 milligram per mil. So she has 1.5 morning and night. That's 30 milligrams morning and night. In the hospital, they use a 10 milligram per mil formula. So that would equal three mils morning and night. And they were taken from our bottle, but they were bringing three mil. So if we had given that to her without double checking it we could have made her even more poorly because that is a strong drug luckily we were there to check it but if we weren't there for any reason and they had just given her that without checking and this is what bothers me they should have checked they they usually would check with their own systems and multiple nurses before bringing it into her but they made this mistake not once but twice on two separate days two separate occasions so that was the first mistake the second one was her SATS probe. So as a standard practice, um, the nurses are meant to move the SATS probe from one foot to another or a different position on the foot just to avoid um, the SATS probe burning, um, burning the foot or anything like that. 
and it was last night and Avery was screaming in pain and I didn't know what was wrong until I looked down at her foot. Now granted, I, you know, Josh or I could have been moving it, but I think what bothers us is just because we are there and just because, you know, we clearly care for a complex child, so we know what we're doing, that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be doing their job, if that makes sense. So her foot looked quite swollen and the SATS probe had almost kind of, Im not embedded into her skin, I'm, that's making it dramatic, but it la left quite a nasty red mark. And the second I took her SATS probe off her foot, she stopped crying. So I can only think that that must have been really hurting her. Um, things like that and her oxygen would drop so I would call the nurses and it would take them ages to come in and it wouldn't be so bad if I could go out and fetch a nurse but we had been told to stay in our room because of testing COVID positive which was completely fair enough. Now the icing on the cake is the room we were in was absolutely sweltering. Bearing in mind we're trying to battle a fever with Avery, it was absolutely sweltering. There was a thermostat in the room, even though we had the thermostat on zero, the radiator was still blasting out heat, we had the windows wide open, nothing was cooling that room down and we weren't allowed to leave our door open because of infection risk. That to me blows my mind that it's okay to leave us in a room with the radiator blasting and the door shut when we're trying to battle a fever with Avery. And it got it got a little bit much, it got a little bit overwhelming and it just got to the point today where we were like Avery would do better at home at this point. At least we can kind of control the temperature of the house a little bit better and at least we don't have to wait around for Avery's milk or Avery's medicines. So we just thought it was better to bring Avery home. Now I will say as well, they could have moved us rooms. I looked across the corridor and there were empty rooms. We could have been moved rooms where maybe the thermostat worked a little bit better, but that is definitely something the hospital needs to work on. You should be able to control the temperature of the rooms especially when you're dealing with children that have fevers. So yeah, we had a really bad experience this time round and we are glad to be home. So now we're just gonna keep a very, very close eye on Avery. We've got her SATS monitor going downstairs. We no normally wouldn't use it in the day, but given that she's ill and has been so ill, we are just keeping um, an eye on her oxygen, uh, oxygen levels and her heart rate, just in case. Now, obviously we're not out the woods, for all we know, she could still spike a fever and have a fit. Her <coughs> oxygen could still drop, but we have um, procedures for that. We have emergency procedures for that. And, you know, luckily the hospital is only up the road. But for now, we just think that she would do better at home and she can actually rest um, without doctors and nurses coming in every time she'd fall to sleep because it would always be it, it would always be that way a avery would like just settle off to sleep and then one of the nurses would come in to write down her um her observations and it would wake her up so we're glad to be home um i am starting to feel a bit better now i i feel like i've just got a cold um the boys luckily are still testing negative which is great um we are not going to little harbor next week even if we did test positive uh, test negative on monday we just don't want it on our conscience of getting another child sick like this um which is sad but necessary and i am just gonna have to think of some nice things that we can do inside um on the build up to christmas to make it nice for the boys more more so eli because zach is still going away with his dad so the last few days it will just be Eli at home. So I've got to try and think of some nice things to do, but in the back of my mind, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself because I'm gonna to have to be keeping a really close eye on Avery. So yeah, there is the update. Um, I'm gonna close this video out here. Sorry, it is all doom and gloom on the lead up to Christmas, but sadly this is just, this is just our luck. This is what has happened to us right before Christmas, but we are not going to let it ruin our Christmas. We're going to hope that Avery is doing better for Christmas Day. We have um, a meal booked out. 
for Christmas Day. So um, yeah, let's just all keep our fingers crossed that she is feeling much better by Christmas. So thank you for listening to me rant and the next video hopefully will be full of some nice festive things but I will of course give you an update on how Avery is doing then as well. So I will see you guys in a few days with another video. Bye guys.